Well, as you can see, I've got my parts all clean back from the ultrasonic cleaning process. But of course, I haven't done anything yet about cleaning the other major components, which all have to be cleaned by hand. So I'll get into that a little bit of naphtha and uh, cotton buds, and I'll soon have everything tidy. Well, the body's quite clean, so I'm not expecting this to take very long. Just need to clean all the way around the casting, taking particular interest where the moving components fit. And this wheel couples, it's an idler, it couples our shutter cocking rack to the shaft that transmits the action to the front of the uh, shutter. There's a bit of dust in here. You have to get rid of the grease first before you try and uh, see the back of that dust really, or if there's any sand in there. Often the best way to shift sand or grit is with a dry paintbrush. Of course you can't do that if you've got grease in there because the paintbrush will simply find the grease and spread it everywhere. And then the sand will never come out. That looks good. Now I'll give that a flick out. That's good. At the base of the camera there's just in here around the film advance and the um, rewind button catch that needs to be wiped out. And here I'm wanting to remove old grease because the old grease will have gone sticky and um, will have gathered up dust and dirt too. Inside the body cavity, this is quite clean. Uh, it's not uncommon to find a big gob of grease down here at the base of the take-up spool, along with all the film chips from every time that people didn't set their frame counter correctly, got to the end of the film and ripped out the film from between the sprocket holes. That body's looking good. The door... Well, this camera's done virtually no work, so there's very little to be done here. So that's all over in a second. The focus scale ring, likewise, is quite clean. There's a little bit of dust in there, a bit of grit perhaps, but generally good. Doesn't look abused or misshapen. So that's good. The struts. I always clean these first and then inspect them to make sure that everything is straight that should be straight. Pieces that should have a bend on them are bent in the correct way. And that any dirt and rubbish is, is long since gone. It's not uncommon for the struts to be slightly bent and that's typically down to people, well cameras getting dropped, um, people going to close the front of the camera without pushing the buttons in first, people going to close the front of the camera without resetting the focus to infinity so that the buttons don't actually move, but then still pushing on the door to close it. And all of those sorts of things happen quite frequently and the struts may get bent as a result. Right, well I've got that clean. Now I'm just going to look at this. I'm checking these inner struts here should be straight. That looks okay. That one looks okay. 
the outer struts here should be slightly dished. They should be higher at the ends than they are in the middle. So that they push this outwards. You can see that this is pushed outwards at the end. When that's squeezed into the body, that transfers the action to where the buttons are up here. It serves to make those buttons very enthusiastic to pop into position. So I've got to check that that's okay. Checking from the side that they're fairly even. That looks okay. I think they'll be fine. So they're ready for reassembly, really. Pop that to one side of the body. This. Here's our focus mount. This is the dirtiest, the stickiest, and the uh, piece most in need of cleaning. This grease has gone hard and dry. It'll have to be scraped out with a wooden toothpick. Don't use a metal object. Normally this will wipe out with some naphtha and toothpicks and cotton buds. Occasionally the grease will have hardened up really well and you're going to have to use something more enthusiastic in the way of a solvent. But hopefully this one will go smoothly. I'll report back if it doesn't. I've just poured a bit of naphtha on there. These toothpicks are useless. Made out of some sort of hard rhubarb, they only last about two seconds. You can see that grease has gone like a hard wax. It's not enthusiastic about coming off. But that stuff would tend to glue the focus scale ring in position, or the um, outer helical in this case. You might find that it worked nice and smoothly one day, and then after the sun had warmed up the camera another day and the grease had run that it would cease to move smoothly. That takes back to just rubbish. I'm going to have to find a uh, bamboo skewer I think to scrape that rubbish off. I'll just reduce this in length somewhat. And let's see how we get on. Yeah, that's coming away. This is just what happens to grease given long enough. The volatiles all go and you're left with the the base, the soap, whatever it is they call it. Right, let's try a bit more naphtha on that and see how I get on. Yeah, that seems to be working.
it's easy enough to get around most of this. Of course, behind the guide posts here, you can't get the cotton bud down in there. So what I normally do is take some of this, tear off a wadge of it, soak that in solvent, stick it in there, and taking my toothpick, or in this case taking my bamboo skewer if I can find it, forcing that round behind that post to wipe that um, area out and the same on the other side and it just gives you access to that area that otherwise you can't really get to well that's looking pretty good I'm going to have one more wipe for good measure There's not much coming off on there, so I think that we are done. And that is our focus mount clean and ready to go. And I'll get rid of that paper and all the remains of those useless broken toothpicks and get ready for the reassembly process. Testing my outer helical in the mount here, it still seems quite stiff, even though I've got all the grease and so forth out of there. There's obviously some distortion here, I would think. Now these alloy mounts are, are prone to a little bit of distortion. What causes it? It's anyone's guess. I think they just relax. I don't think that's flat when I look across that there it doesn't look exactly flat and so it might be that but what I'm going to do is use some Brasso and basically polish the two components together like lapping valves and um, that will take out the high spots and make that move freely so what I've got here is I've, I've put the focus scale ring back on the outer helical to give me something to grip it with so I can twist it backwards and forwards and use my Brasso to polish these surfaces basically to remove the high spots. I'm just using this as a, uh, a fine grinding compound you could say. So all I do is fit that in place and just work this backwards and forwards. Every now and then I'll stop, clean it out, try it, see if it's running nice and free with nothing in there. If it is, that's I can stop and if it isn't, well, I'll need to do a bit more polishing. I need to get it to the state where it revolves smoothly in here. It shouldn't have any noticeable play and it's certainly going to be a long way from getting to that stage. But there must be high spots. Now whether there's down, that's down to distortion in this casting, which I strongly suspect, or whether it's because something is otherwise bent. Now this is suddenly just freed up. I have obviously just polished through some high spot. So I'm most of the way there now. This will probably show mostly in that mount. That's some sort of uh, aluminum, aluminum alloy I think. And it's probably softer than the brass. We'll probably see a bright spot where it's been polished down. I'll just continue this for a minute or two and then we'll, I'll show you, clean it up and show you what we've got.
Well this is pretty much fit for use now. I don't know whether you can see easily on the camera. There's a bright patch around here and here on the top surface. On the inside there's a bright patch around here near the guide post and the same on the other side here. So certainly there's some distortion in this piece. We're not getting even contact. This piece of course is round and even if it wasn't round I've been turning it in a circular fashion so that if there were any irregularities in this it would be even on this. But all the irregularities are here and it means this casting is just not it's changed shape over time. It's relaxed most likely. Thermal stresses and God knows what else have come out of it and it's not as flat as it once was. It's not the same shape it was when it was machined. Anyway, I've polished out those, uh, those friction spots if you like and this now moves quite smoothly so I can move to the reassembly. Here you can see I have the outer helical and the inner helical all assembled on that mount and the action is very smooth. That should be fine. So I'm very pleased with that. Of course at the moment that's got no lubrication at all. It will be getting lubricated. Start by putting these struts back in the body. So the shutter release mechanism sits in the body like that. This follows the tube, follows that guide rail there. So I've wiped a bit of molybdenum paste on there. I'm also wiping some on this shaft so that that shutter release runs smoothly. In the camera body, this is the shaft that shutter release runs on. So I've just run some molybdenum paste on there. And there's the return spring. I'll put that in place. We have the, sh the shaft that takes the action from the cocking rack through to the shutter at the front of the camera. So I'm putting some synthetic grease on that. And that fits in here. Now it, sometimes it's tricky to get it under the, the last fold of the bellows. That you just have to loop it under there and you're away. It sits in its socket quite nicely. That is held in place with this bracket. So I'll put that down there in position. And that bracket is held in place with the struts mechanism. So we've got to prepare the struts mechanism to go in. This has all been cleaned. I've checked it, decided that there's nothing bent. Basically it's as good as gold. So I'm going to lubricate the slots at the back. with some synthetic grease. I'm not going to lubricate the slots at the front because I'll only end up rubbing it off with my fingers while I'm putting everything in place. So with the struts in the up position I've got to hook this piece on the shutter release over the shaft And swing the struts into position without disturbing that bracket that holds the shaft in position. It's not dropping into place very well. I'm hung up at where it's alright. Start again. My shutter release had come off the arm, off the shaft. I must have lifted things. Okay, so everything's sitting there now. That bracket I mentioned is 
trapped between the body and the struts and I can put one screw through there to hold it. The screw runs through to the struts. Okay, that, that's good. I didn't bother, I didn't tighten that right up, I just pulled it up snug, checking to make sure that the bracket is indeed in place. And at the bottom, in the same relative position between the struts and the body, is a spacer washer. So I drop that in on the edge of the struts, lift the struts with the tip of my tweezers, the washer drops down into position. If I flip that leather out of the way, I can see, see it right here. Pull that into position, check from the front to make sure it is the right one, it is there. And I should have one of these screws may have adhesive on it. Oh, they all look as clean as, I can't tell. Because these have been through the cleaner, they've, everything's come off them. But usually you will have one screw that's got glue on it from the bottom of the camera. And you'd use that there. So we've got our two screws on at that end. There are two in the film cassette well chamber, cassette chamber there, so we'll get that in place. Usually they go in with um, a minimal amount of struggle. Sometimes if things have been a little bit bent up, stuff doesn't really want to line up as well as it might, and you may have to uh, struggle a bit to get things pulled around to where the screws are lined up. But this time, everything is good. Okay, so I've got the four screws in position. I'll now tighten those four screws up. That's our struts back in the body. You can check that they collapse. Yeah, they certainly do. And they click up into position. Now I can put my focus mount back in there. Now the focus mount I've already got reassembled at the moment because I wanted to lubricate everything and make sure that everything moved as smoothly as it should do. So I'll take that scale focus scale ring back off. The rest of the helical can stay assembled. And this can go into the focus mount into the uh, lens standard and bellows. Alright, well here's the focus mount. Now this is assembled. I've got the inner and outer helical all assembled together, which was no great um, challenge. Just a case of making sure that the ins inner helical and the outer helical were correctly aligned and uh, just applying a little bit of helical grease to everything so that everything and checking that everything moved smoothly. This particular camera of course the focus was quite stiff and that was down to some distortion in that um, casting and so I wanted to make sure that everything moved smoothly before I bothered to put it all back in the camera. Okay, so that's all in place. That moves smoothly. Now I'm going to collapse the bellows, collapse the struts rather. And there are four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. And I'll put those in place. And then I can put the focus scale ring on. 
Now you're pulling up with a layer of felt and a, a layer of, or possibly even multiple layers of leather from the folds of the bellows between the bellows and the back of the front stand. And so these screws do not pull up tight like fasteners do against metal. So don't overdo it. Don't just keep going until they pull up tight because they're not going to get quite that far and all you'll end up doing is snapping your screws. Okay, so that's all the bellows are back in place. I can put my focus scale ring in place. And of course, I've got my alignment marks to help me. Right here. Somebody else's alignment marks are over there. Excuse me. A busy day. Never mind. Getting this thing aligned. I've got my alignment marks there, but also I can see the indents where the screws bit into the focus scale ring previously. Of course they're quite small marks, but if you know where, where to look you can see them. So I'll get these four screws in place. Now these screws do not need to be screwed down tight. If you screw them down very tight, all you'll achieve is that you will distort the outer helical and the focus will be very stiff if it moves at all. So they just need to be snug. That focus is nice and smooth now. It's as it should be. Right, this piece and its screws. Well, phone calls, visitors, people making deliveries. I'm finally getting back to this again. So this bracket on the front here is fixed to the inner helical. It has two major jobs. The first is to have a an arm attached to it so that it will move the rangefinder as the inner helical moves backwards or forwards. And the second major purpose is this little piece here. That's where the screw on the back of the shutter drops into. That locates the shutter so that the shutter cannot rotate on the camera. Because if the shutter could rotate on the camera, then when you went to cock the shutter, the shutter would be just getting pushed back the opposite way the shutter wouldn't be getting cocked correctly. And this little screw I've just put in there, that's what couples to our range find. So that's all good. That's the front of the camera dealt with. Oh, I can put that gear on there, on that shaft I suppose, and it's shroud. Yeah, they can go on. 